You are listening to a production of WRCT Pittsburgh. Any opinions expressed within are solely those of the participants and do not reflect the views of WRCT Radio Incorporated. Questions and comments can be addressed to the Public Affairs Director at PA at WRCT.org or by calling 412-621-0728. Live from WRCT Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the Total Education Hour, the talk shop for teachers, parents, and administrators. Here's your host of the show, Neil Haley, the Total Tutor. It's time for the Total Education Hour. All right. I am excited anytime to have uh, the Total Education Hour. And uh, I just came back from L.A., uh, uh, Orange County, whatever you want to call it. And it was a unbelievable uh, experience uh, for Otfest. And, uh, you know, when I started this show over seven years ago, did I think I'd be traveling to places like L.A.? to hobnob with the uh, famous people and cover events like this. It's fantastic. And uh, the, again, all is thanks to WRCT. And I want to welcome the program my co-host, Peter Alvich. Peter, how are you? We're ready to talk education talk tonight, and I don't know what we're going to talk about. So that's that's the kind of show we're going to have, and we're just waiting for Jason, the public school guy, and Jarrett. But Peter, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing great, and congrats, by the way, and yeah, I'm ready for the show tonight. It's awesome. Yeah, I can't wait to unveil the guests. They were pretty big, but not to the level I expected. A lot of people did not show up on the red carpet. And the guests that I'm able to pull most of the time <laughs> are bigger. <laughs> like this week already, uh, I've had a pretty big uh, guest list already of top stars on just the radio. But you know, it, but what was really cool was doing my first red carpet. And you got to learn how to do specific things like red carpets. But my producer has informed me, Jason, the public school guys on the line. Jason, how are you? Just got back from Cali, and we're ready to talk education. How are you, Jason? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good, good. Uh, don't feel like it's 8 o'clock. Feel like it's 11 o'clock. So that means I have uh, beaten the jet lag, and uh, we're ready to chat, and we're ready to talk <laughs> education talk. And uh, no pr- more no more predictions, except all I can say is that Jarrett got really mad at me last the last time we recorded uh, was my whole thought process on the PSSAs and how much of a waste of time they are and how we waste so many weeks of school doing them and missing instruction. And Jarrett did not like that comment, did he, Jason? No, he didn't. But, you know, I agree with you on that one. That's good. So somehow it's uh, uh, we have an agreement. But I mean, it's can't believe it. Three. This is the second week. We got one more week to waste. I think the high school at least spreads it out so they don't waste two weeks. They waste about maybe three or four days, right? Nope, 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 nope. High school does it. This, it's the last week of May. But they get it all so done in one week, week, right? May. But they do it all in one week, right? In one, in one week, we'll do it in one week. Yeah, but we'll you, one week. but you guys will still cover material. You're not like, oh, you won't give nope. homework, but you'll cover material. Nope. No. Nope. Really? Nope. Not not for those kids who are being tested. Well, that's the kids who are being tested, and it, sometimes it varies, right? Well, for the kids who aren't being well, for the kids who aren't being tested, it's it's a, it's a normal school day. Exactly, exactly. But you have an entire group of kids who are being tested, and so that, that, that does play a role. Okay. All right, let's kind of look at the news. I don't want to cover that again, and it was quite interesting. Remember, our, our, the if I'm trying to remember correctly on some of our topics, but let's go to back to the news this week. No real topic, and that's just because, uh, but I'm sure that education news has been exciting lately. Uh, we all know Donald Trump's been exciting, but we can't talk about that. And educationnews.org again, we're very sad for you guys that you no longer are um, a news source. I still um, maybe I need to say, come back educationnews.org, but we'll go to ed- edweek.org, who again is uh, in, the, in the union uh, 
pretty much owns them. So let's go to them. So school districts update professional development. Okay. And uh, th- this is this will be interesting, and I'll make sure that this uh, is, this is a special report. And kind of for Peter to understand professional development, it's a time period where teachers have to continue, even though they're certified, to have professional uh, instruction by to continue to increase the, and learn their craft and spend certain in service days earning sp- s- professional credit hours or in college regarding their ma- the, the, the class they're teaching. So this is going to be yep. interesting, Jason, about professional development, because are we going to change things under our new regime? You know, Jason? Uh, I haven't heard anything about this one, but I wouldn't be surprised if they don't try to change everything. Yeah, especially when, when we have ghost teachers, right, Jason? Just had to bring that up from the last... <laughs> <laughs> the, the, well, you know, they're not ghost teachers. They're actually doing a function of the school district. So, okay, that's fine. We're not gonna, we're not gonna get into that. Trust me, we we could, we could. But you want to get into it? No, no I, I no, will throw no, down with no, you, no, and no, I will win. No, no, no. You lost last time, and you and Jared both lost. And no, I didn't lose anything. I actually, <laughs> no, no, I didn't lose anything. You're the one who bought into the. Uh, Clap trap of a hard right, but that's besides the point. Okay, okay, let's go. In Wisconsin, uh, basically, Katie Moran District, or oh, I'm sorry, Moran. <laughs> Is that Ke- no? That's Kettle <laughs> Moraine School District teachers can personalize their own professional learning by earning micro credentials in areas that interest them. Oh my gosh, this is funny, Jason. <laughs> in Florida's Lake County School District, in uh, scheduling models allow teachers to collaborate more often. And on the other side of the country, California Long Beach Unified District has developed new methods to collect evidence on effectiveness of professional development to it offers teachers. School districts are moving toward the menu of professional learning options that get creative about improving teaching practice. That's a good thing, right, Peter? So basically, if I understand correctly, uh, people can now decide to choose different areas and then that can enhance where they're currently at for their profession. Yes. And and, and Jason, this is kind of interesting. So I don't think in Pennsylvania they're going down this route yet, are they? Uh, they already have. We've been doing it for the last two years. So kind of explain that because uh, I have not been in the classroom. Explain that to our listeners. Well, what we're doing I mean, this- this year, they really put a push towards collaboration within my school district. Um, I meet with um, different teachers for lessons that we could collaborate on, whether I enhance their lessons or they enhance mine. Um, I, I, I've i taught in – I will be have taught by the end of the school year uh, in two different classes. Um, I'm working on teaching in two additional classes for next year. Um trying to enhance the lessons being taught within that content area. Um, also, you can, I mean, it, it's always been the case that if you want to go get a degree in something else or you want to go get additional training in something else, you can do that. So that, and that's, that's not nothing, that's not anything new. It, they're just, it, they're, they're, they're highlighting it in some of the bigger you know, states in the, in the union. So I'm already throwing out a tweet out there. Do you think uh, school districts provide good professional development for uh, for teachers? Uh, so um, no, you say no. Okay, so that's the question. Do you think school districts provide no. good professional development for teachers? Ask, and ask any ask any active teacher how in service days are when they have to go to professional development and almost every teacher will tell you, oh my God, we're a waste of my time. Well, and I agree with you too. So why are you saying by making it creative, it works, Jason, if then you're saying that it's... it's, it's... I didn't say it worked. I, I said this is what we're doing. Uh, okay. Um, whether it works or not to be seen. Okay, so let's... Because here's, yeah. the, the, the downside of Mike doing this collaboration is I'm not in my classroom. Correct. Yeah. Uh, if I would be working with somebody else's classes, that means I'm not in my classroom. And I'm being paid to teach a class by myself, not for somebody else. Um, so I mean, there's, it's a good idea, but the practice of it needs to be worked out. Um, and and therein, lies, therein lies the problem with the current model. But, I mean, 
again, I, I, I think it's a good idea. It's just a matter of trying to find a way to make it work. All right, so basically continuing the conversation. Go ahead, Peter. Oh, yeah, I just had a, I just had a quick question. Um, so for, like, when, when you're looking at this, like, let's say you have two teachers that want to enhance their, their learning and, you know, let's just say for the fact two different subjects, is there anything that would say, you know, which subject would be more more better than the other or which teacher would be better? Or is it no, no, like there's a something... ground kind of thing? Well, yeah, there's, there's no better or worse. Like, today I collaborated with two English teachers on the book 1984. My content area is in social studies. Um, I, I, I'm particularly uh, – my, my part of it was to deal with the concept of totalitarianism and how it relates to 1984. So I came up with the nine generalizations of totalitarianism. I, I put down what, what they are. I interpreted them so it, it, in a way which high school kids could easily, 10th graders could easily digest it. Um, and then we began to collaborate on how we wanted to come up with some real world examples on um, the, the, the use of Big Brother on our everyday lives. And how can we make that relevant to the kids so that they could be more engaged in the process and, and understand better what it is that they're they're dealing with um yeah gotcha. you know, so i mean like we're doing but but this was a, these, these are english lessons so as i walk into that environment and i and i and i go to work with those teachers i i give deference to what they want because it's their lesson now if i want to do something in my room with another teacher collaborate with another teacher then i'm going to ask them to give deference to me so that we can do what you know what, what I'm looking for because I'll have an idea about what I want out of that class based upon what our collaboration is going to be. Yeah, I, I think yeah. it's I think okay. I think it's a bu- bunch of hooey in, in a lot of ways, and they need to provide better ways of improving professional development. I think it's going to be basically having an expert that would not punish you and would not be part of your evaluation system come in, befriend you in the classroom. That's a really good teacher from another district or has a retired teacher that wants to give a lot of uh, suggestions that are not forced suggestions and put a bunch of those uh, retired teachers in the classroom. Well, if they're not forced. They're not going to be done. They're not. So it's just that simple. If it's not forced, it's not going to be done. If you think you know best about what to do in your classroom and Neil, you know this because you've done this in your classroom. If somebody came into your room and told you, Neil, you're completely wrong with what you're doing Here's what here's what else you need to do. You're going to listen to them. You're going to smile. You're going to say okay. And then if it's not forced, you're going to still do your own thing. And guess what? Jarrett is on the line. Jarrett, you get to chime in uh, after the break to talk about professional development because we were talking about you. I don't know if you missed that point, Jarrett. Did you hear about us talking about uh, you and uh, your your point about the waste of time, which is PSSAs? Wait, I thought I was only allowed to chime in after the break. Yeah, I just had to ask you that. But when we get back, we're going to continue the conversation. <laughs> professional development is, is it? Is it does it does it work I or was not trying work? To be professional. I was trying to be professional and follow the directions that the that the uh, show host had given me. So oh. and then you wouldn't <laughs> change the rules on it. Hey, I, I follow a different playbook, you know, and especially, uh, but I, 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 I'm, and, and I can't believe what happened uh, to the spin stops here. Just so sad to see uh, that he had to go, but he's getting a podcast. He'll he'll end up making tons of money still. Bill O'Reilly, the end of Bill O'Reilly as we know well, it. He made he made tons of money just by getting fired. Exactly. He and, walked out with. Yeah. He walked out with $22 million. And then if he but runs he also a, they, a ton of money because he can't keep his hands to himself. So there's that too. Okay. So when we get back, we'll continue the conversation. You're listening to the Education Hour on 88.3 WRCT in Pittsburgh. And we're streaming live at WRCT.org, hashtag WRCT. You know, if you can see people like Bill O'Reilly making that kind of money, then you see journalism is a, is a, is a decent major, people. 
consider it. We'll be back in just a moment. We're There's back to the Toll Education a- Hour. We're <laughs> <laughs> well, listening to the Toll Education Hour. I'm with Jason, the public school guy, Jarrett, and Peter Alvich. We're going to jump right into Jarrett. And in the conversation, Jason says that professional development is a pretty much waste of time because they are not providing very good opportunities for to, to become better at your craft. What is your take on all this, Jarrett, especially when you hear about professional development opportunities when you taught uh do you think that there is definitely we talked about how we thought duquesne university was far better than any professional development we ever received once we get into the schools how can we make this better i mean honestly i think i think duquesne university was our professional development um and you know most of the uh training seminars and services that, that I had at McEwen School at Swickley Academy, um, they were valuable. Now, certainly I had colleagues, especially at Swickley Academy, that didn't see any value in them. Um, but uh, I, I certainly <laughs> found them to be informative, and, and uh, I, I walked out, and even now in my current role, my current job, I, I find uh, value in, in pretty much every training that I have attended. And the um, I think it's important. I think I think it's critical to to developing um, knowledge and 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 staying on top of change. And I bl- I agree with you in that way, Jarrett. That yes, it is a such a, a an important thing, professional development. And Peter, I know for a fact when you are educating the the blind and visually impaired. You see specifically enough how important they th- th- teaching them specific uh, skill sets involving technology, Peter, so that if people are open to learn that are receiving some of your trainings, Peter, they see flat out that they, they can benefit from it. But the people that are not interested in learning it are going to have that ca- same kind of attitude like Jason, right, Peter? But, well, so for my my trainings, at least when I when I do things, is I try to leave it open ended for anyone, whether it be blind or visual impairment or regular, uh, so that even if you are looking to get trained, you know, then you have the ability. And then if you aren't looking to be trained, but you happen to see the video and you're interested, you know, you have that opportunity. Um, in that re- in that saying that, you know, I like I said. I value that training people and teaching people as much as possible is an important thing. I think it just depends on the way of doing it. Um, in the school sense platform, I don't know too much about that as to what's the right or the wrong way, but at least in my opinion, teaching and learning things is, is good. Even if it might take a little extra time, I think that if we can push ourselves forward more than push ourselves backwards, I think it's more of a positive. And when my idea of talking about having expert teachers that really love their craft like a Jarrett or somebody else that would go in and work with a teacher, especially a younger teacher, and help them in the craft, that's going to be a far better on-the-job training, maybe their first three to seven years in the business, than uh, going and and listening to an in-service for three hours. So that's where my idea of how you can improve things. And Jason, you don't agree with me on this, do you? Well, like I said, if 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 a, if a, if a teacher is not go, is not willing to listen, they're not going to listen. I don't care and if it's not being forced or enforced on them, then they're not going to make any changes. It's just it's just that hey, simple. No one does that. Hey, you know, Neil. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, where do you get these numbers? Three to seven. I mean, like, why not one to three, two to four? Because the first How seven did you years, come up with we, we, three to seven years as being the um, the teachers that need the need the, need like the formation the, the about seven se- about seven years is where they're going to be where they don't really care anymore. They have tenure and they can do what the heck they want to do. There you go. That's 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 my take. And so let's kind of identify does, does that, the. Does that come from the University of Neil Haley? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I wondered. I, I I did. I thought. I wonder what the significance of seven is. So I, I just kind of have. I mean, to but ask tenure that, comes yeah. before that. But uh, I'm just saying, these are the types of teachers that would I would roll back tenure to seven years. 
and then I would basically have a, 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 a the ability to really uh, engage them in a specific conversation. When I talk to the uh, the uh, United Negro College Fund and UNC, U, UNCF and had that convo with them, basically teacher formation is the biggest issue right now we're dealing with. Well, this professional development's not going to work unless it's learning on the job. And when you talk about any adult learning new things. Uh, I, I know how to stay ahead of the game by constantly wanting to learn new things. There are tons of people that are just stuck well, in their old ways, so we need to figure and, out a way and, to and make Neil, yeah, go I, me, go and, and, and Neil, I agree. I, I mean, I, I agree with what you're saying. Um, you know, the other side of that, though, is that the person that is doing this training they need to be undergoing consistent professional development um, simply because they're the mentor or the, the teacher um, doesn't make them infallible. And um, I, I would think that if you're looking to someone to be that type of person, that leader, they need to be constantly um, learning themselves so that they can pass on the, the, most current and, and innovative and important teaching methods. Can, um, can I? Go, can Peter. I, go, 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 Peter. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. sorry, I didn't want to interrupt. I, I just thought of a good point. Is um, So it's, it's a good example. I was doing a YouTube video a few days ago, and uh, just for all of you out there, I use a white cane instead of a guide dog. And I don't know proper pronunciations of guide dogs or, you know, what, basically what people call their companions, guide dogs, it's all just different um, uh, topics, right? But the official statement, you know, because I said companion in the video, just how I relate and how I've been heard, I had a few people comment on it and educate me that, that guide dog is the proper term to be used. And I think that's important, you know, like I don't know everything. So, that's why, like, particularly my my uh, opportunities that I put out there for people, not only for people to learn from me, but also for me to learn from people as well. Peter, that was a good point. Yeah, absolutely. And so that was so that so those are the the the, the, the things that we're dealing with. Jason, as I'm about to tweet this out to my uh, Twitter sphere. I'm going to ask the question, why are some adults unwilling to learn? Because so, because this is the thing. Why, you, what's going to make... You, 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 people get stuck in their own ways. You know, like the server of <laughs> your show's a host. Uh, you know, like the server of points of view. Huh. Neil, way to, way, to ask, way to ask a negative question there, Neil. Um <laughs> <laughs> Um, that was taken directly out of the Sean Hannity School of Journalism. <laughs> well, he's chilling as his Bill O'Reilly right now. <laughs> no, I, I think Tucker Carlson's why, terrible. Why do you hate the successful people? Why do you? <laughs> why do you like the, the makers? I, I have not. I've not figured out how to contrive this, but we better go back to the article. But I think we've hit it to death and say, "Oh, great deal!" But I think that the, the allowing teachers to create their own professional development, I think, is great. But we need expert master teachers uh, to, and that's. I'm going to end this little part of this. This uh, wait a second. Segment. Wait, wait, wait. Did you just say let teachers create their own professional That's what That's what's happening, man. That's what we're talking about. And Jason says it's happening uh, right uh, now. That's a terrible idea. That's a horrible idea. Jason, I is mean, that true? my God, there won't be any professional. Nobody would, would have professional development. So let's ask our, our great secretary of education. <laughs> <laughs> Betsy DeVos to chime in on this. Should we go at Betsy DeVos right now on Twitter? And I'm sure she'll respond to me. Uh, Betsy, come on now. Well, how are we going to improve a professional and development? And that does not mean that we're just going to take that they're going to have some time off. That, that might work in your line of work, but not in ours. Oh, let's continue with the next topic. Teachers like common planning time survey shows. So another interesting thing involving planning. Jason and Jared have planned for eons, especially when they first started as teachers. Myself as well. Um, 
do you think, Jason, now that uh, teachers are inundated with having to do more and more lesson planning because of this great idea of creating unit plans or, I mean, curriculum mapping and all of this kind of uh, extra work. That's not new. They've been doing curriculum mapping for a long time. They've yeah, been doing about 10 years. For a long time. About That's 10 to 15 new. years. But it's a waste of time, curriculum mapping, in my opinion. Well, I mean, that's that's your opinion. Um, but, no, planning time, don't spend, when we curriculum map, we spent exactly two days on that. That was it. Um, but for, when it comes to working in collaborative time periods, I think it's a great idea, especially if you have multiple people at the high school teaching the same content area, um, trying to make sure that they're, they're addressing the same content um, in, in the same kind of way. And, 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 and moving forward and, and, and giving the best possible lessons to those kids so that they can learn. And I'm, I'm putting this out, this next tweet, and I did not put the other one up. Do you think curriculum mapping works? And I say, no, it doesn't. And let's go to Jarrett. Let's go to Jarrett. What is your thought on that? It's like writing lesson plans a second time. What are, what are, what are your um, thoughts? I, I, I think, wait, there's a schematic. Uh, yes, I, I won't answer it like a politician. Curriculum, curriculum mapping, yes, it works. The same way that a schematic diagram works, um, the same way that uh, the user manual works. Uh, I, I think that the, it's a, another part of, of the planning process. Um, I, I think it works. But isn't it just doing the same I thing agree. again? It's, I knew you guys would agree. Uh, and then we're going to we're going to go to common planning and find out what that means. But, Peter, I think that this is let me give you my example of what curriculum mapping is. You basically take what you are already writing in your lesson plans and extend, expand them throughout an entire year. Nope. Nope. What? Well, what's the what's no, what's the special? What's the special thing, Jarrett? What's the, the special? It's the opposite. Okay. The well, opposite. Your curriculum map, your mapping guides your lesson plan. That's too bad that they don't Not do it the that way. way okay, so that's a great point that we can go well, to, but we're going to let Peter after the break answer that question but no no that's not what's happening when uh they're having teachers curriculum map a lot of times uh it is not guiding the rest of the lessons and i think that if you can't pace yourself how did you know that neil neil how did you know that uh i i have uh specific inside sources his so, wife from how many <laughs> <laughs> so when we get back, we'll no, go. I mean, we'll we'll, 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 we'll Jason, go. Ouch. Jason, I think Neil is correct. I mean, I'm sure you know teachers in your school who do the curriculum map based on their lesson plans that they've kept for years and years. Okay, so when we get back, we'll continue that conversation. <laughs> You're listening to Education Hour on 88.3 WRCT in Pittsburgh, and we're streaming live at WRCT.org, hashtag WRCT, and it's great to get back and argue. It really is. It's, 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 it's healthy. It's, it's a nice thing, and it's a nice way, after I've been sick for so many darn weeks or tired for so many darn weeks, to get on the air and plan things out like my posts for my clients so that they're already planned ahead oh that's a great segue into our next segment we'll be back in just a moment we're back to the told education hour on 88.3 wrct in pittsburgh and we're streaming live at wrct.org hashtag wrct and i miss you california i miss you especially the opportunity to be on the red carpet looking forward to the next red carpet for myself and all of these uh fun opportunities that i have been able able to experience in seven years in radio see jason you, jared you got to show up at the beginning of a show not in the not with 10 minutes into the show to, to know some of the stories but we'll go into that a little bit later and we could talk about it at the end but let's talk about again planning i believe planning is important but i ultimately believe that curriculum mapping and i want to hear peter to hear to give you this is the description of curriculum mapping you're mapping out an entire year based on the kind of lessons that you're going to teach. So you're basically doing the same thing twice. How can we know <laughs> six months later what we're going to teach based on the differences of learners and how 
you and then this garbage now that if you're teaching algebra in Western Pennsylvania, you better all be teaching geometry at the same time. If we're talking about like a pre-algebra course, you can't be still on algebra, even though half the kids don't get it. That's my thought of why curriculum mapping doesn't work. But Peter, chime in on this. Any any uh, nuggets to talk about based on what we just brought up, the curriculum mapping, but we're going to go into common planning time at one point, I hope. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, so, and, and let me know if this isn't quite correct, but this is at least my thought. Uh, I can't say from an education standpoint of a teacher, but like if I was thinking of like creating a YouTube series and I was planning out the whole year's YouTube series, right? And I was thinking, you know, and I was basing it off of previous thoughts of like last year, so to speak, I would want to plan ahead to, you know, plan what steps I want to go for different people or different topics and things like that, uh, as well as different directions I might want to take. But also, in, at least in my mind, I would also leave spots open or at least leave possibilities for either tangents or changes. Um, so I, I don't know if that quite answers the question. Or not. I mean, in my personal opinion, planning things out is, is better, at least from my personal perspective. But uh, uh, I hope that I answered the question. Okay, I like that point. <laughs> it, uh, but, it, it, yeah. I'll, I'll answer for Neil, Peter. You answered the question. Yes, that's exactly why you use a curriculum map. See, Neil, here's the thing about a map is that it, it's not, it is not the complete steps. It is simply a map. It gives you a plan so that when you do run into an obstacle, you're not flying by the seat of your pants. You actually can adapt. Like Peter used the word there, adapt, change. That's the importance of it. You know, hey, the military uses maps all the time. They're planned. That's because when they come up against an obstacle, they want to have plan B, plan C, plan five, six, seven, eight. That's why you have a map. But why can't you just okay here, so Jason, you, I'm gonna throw you out. I'm gonna throw you out. Go ahead. See what Neil's also not mentioning is that those curriculum maps are just made up willy nilly. I'm just I'm just gonna teach this lesson. No, it's based <laughs> It's simply based upon what the state curriculum says you have to teach. Right. So, I mean, those curriculum maps are, are, are placed out based upon state standards so that we make sure that we're addressing the state standards and stay in compliance with the law. Why can't we do it in lesson planning, Jason? Here's here's the point, uh, what I think it is. We do. It's, it's extra. The lesson plans come from the map. So why can't we just use the curriculum guide as our map? Why do we have to waste you, our time you writing? You, why can't we just use the guide? Good. So think of it this way. At least this is the way I'm interpreting. You know, if we were to use, just use the guide for deciding when we do things and when we go places, it's like using a driver's manual to decide how to fix your car without knowing the instructions. Yeah. You think about yeah. it. So, so I mean, I, 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 yeah, go ahead. What were you going to say? Look, look. Neil, and I do get your point here. I mean, we have proven that with this show and its success that you don't need to have a plan. So I do, I do uh, understand what you're saying. And, and, you know, I think what you, you, you're kind of saying is if you're overly planned, there, you, you can't, you, you can't improvise. You can't be spontaneous. You you can't. Mm -hmm. In some ways, you get stuck, and that's actually the, yeah. the fun of this this show is that we really don't operate by any rules, standards, or guidelines. No. <laughs> <laughs> but no, see, but what I'm saying to you, and we're not going to continue to compare my show to uh, me not planning this show. But if I had a full time producer. They could do it for me because I'm too busy, but we're not going to talk about that. Uh, so, and 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 I'm going to come here and I'm going to talk about whatever the article is because I can talk about education without having to prepare and look at a bunch of note cards. I know exactly what I'm talking about, and I believe the curriculum mapping. If you could just look at the curriculum guide and then write your lesson plans based on that, I think lesson plans planning for a week is enough. Yes, you could look at the curriculum guide and say, okay, I got to cover this in twelve months. But why the 
heck, do, or nine months, or whatever months it is in the school year, why the heck do I have to waste my darn time writing the same thing almost twice? We need to have teachers. It's a cliff note. Oh, it's a cliff. It's not a cliff note. Let's talk because, about all the stupidity. Because, look, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you go to the state of Pennsylvania's, you know, the SAS portal, which is where they find all these, uh, all these, uh, like what you're supposed to teach at what grade levels, it is incredibly difficult to, to navigate the SAS portal, and it's also incredibly difficult to read through it. So why did you not? Because now you create cliff notes of the things that you need to do to stay within, within um, compliance and, a short, and you find it in a shorter, quicker, more efficient fashion. Why, why even have lesson plans? You have to be quite frank because, I mean, you know what you're going to be teaching anyway. Do it because parents need to see it. And so that's why you're doing both. Curriculum mapping is for the teacher and, and um, the, 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 the uh Lesson plans are for the parents and for the kids. Uh, see, see, no, see, and I, I don't agree with that. Lesson planning is for the parents of the kids. It's for the teacher. Now, we only should be planning. Here, here's, let's just talk about me as an entrepreneurial coach, business coach. I'm going to, when I work with a client, we're going to plan in 90-day increments. We're not going to plan in six-month increments or nine-month increments. And we're going to look at 90-day goals, and we're going to keep it to that short term of a, a number, and then we're going to plan week to week also based on our goals so we can reach those goals in 90 days. So if you're telling me that planning for you, 10 you, months— You're mapping out 90 days ahead of time? 90. 90, but you're putting... So you're going to so map it out 90 days ahead of time. Yeah, that's better than the curriculum map, which is the whole year. So you're, so you're curriculum mapping. So you cri- so you're curriculum mapping. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> no, 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 no. See, this is that's completely different. I'm not having my clients go in lesson oh, plan and write curriculum maps. You do it. Oh, okay, I get it now. <laughs> yeah, see, Jason, 90 days, that's completely different than... Nine months, you know, right. three months. Right. Yeah, it's it's more short term. If you it's do more it short term. The time is it mapping? Right. If, oh, if but see, but see, but I, days, okay, okay. Here's mapping. the reason: either we should right. curriculum map or we should lesson plan. We don't need to do both. Response. Let's go with. Well, yeah. <laughs> you need to do both. You need to, you need to have a long term plan and a short term execution. And that's what both of those things do. But it's kind of really redundant in so many ways. Teachers are applauding me. Teachers are applauding me right now. They're saying, you tell them, Neil, we got to get rid of this paperwork. Throw it out the window. We have not enough time to be teachers. We're constantly writing paper. I agree with you. Let's get rid of of lesson plans. I I mean, I would say to you, uh, let's, let's do one or the other. Let's not do both. There's not enough yeah, time. Right. Let's get rid of lesson plans. Let's get rid of lesson plans completely. No, I didn't say to get rid of that. And we're not talking anarchy here. Well, you said one or the other. I'm saying lesson plans. Okay, and uses curriculum maps. It can be done. It can be done because you ask the essential question. You're talking about writing in your, your, your what pages you're going to cover in each one of your essential questions. And that essential question is no, leading. It won't. Yes, it will. No, it won't. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to go over the general concepts of which I'm going to cover, and I'm going to determine on a day-to-day basis based upon the flexibility that I need to have to reach my. Well, kids. maybe that's that's oh, that that's your school district's uh, curriculum map, but the way we were doing it is far more detailed. Uh, Neil, don't you think it's kind of being lazy to do it any other way? I mean, it's it's like. So, you so were we, we, about just, we just we just standards we, we, in the first right. in one of the segments of the show. I mean, to me, having someone be planned and organized, and um, I'd love it if all of my instructors at, at where I work would come to me with a nine month plan. Oh man, I'd love it if they came to me with a nine day plan, a nine minute plan, <laughs> a nine hour um, plan. You know, it, it's. No, see, but what I'm saying, Jared, I think, is I think that's maybe it's a different, maybe it's a different type and style of curriculum mapping that I was 
forced to do at St. Agnes or my wife was forced to do at St. Mary's that were pretty much repeating what you're writing in your lesson plans. Maybe Jason's is far better uh, set up and that that's the difference. But if you're rewriting what you're doing in your personal day-to-day lesson plans in your curriculum map, it's a waste of time. Bottom line, and teachers are going to be applauding me right now. I know they're applauding me. I, I'm hearing I actually, the... Go ahead, I Peter. I have a pretty, uh, a pretty good point. Is So think of it this way. is like what I do for YouTube videos is I plan my week to YouTube videos out ahead of time, figuring out topics, right? So I have my general topics of which I'm going to do for those five days. And then when it comes to that particular day, I will either, A, make that video ahead of time and already have that planned and then implement some extra uh, things into that major topic, or B, already or ha- make it that day and then elaborate on the major topic. Um, so that's just is something, in my my opinion, for free planning, having the generals out either ahead of time or planning about them ahead of time and then elaborating on based on, you know, what you're going for for each day. Uh, but that's just at least, you know, an, an example of what I do. For different things. <laughs> See, I, I don't, I don't plan those things out. I don't know what guests are coming on each week, yeah. and, and then I just Dude, roll with it. You're I, way more professional. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you who my guests are going to be. I'm just waiting to see who the heck's coming on each week, because <laughs> my 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 bookers don't tell me to last minute. So I just say, okay, I got the let's roll, let's roll with uh, let's roll with a, a certain guest. You know that that's how it, that's how I have to work and operate. But that's the way the nature of media works and how news travels. Uh, we all heard the fake news that Eddie Murphy died today. Well, guess what? He didn't. So uh, I was thinking, okay, who's going to, what radio tour will I have to do tomorrow to trivia? Did he die today? No, he didn't die. It was fake news just came out today. So fake news. Who so. died? Did it, come, did it come from Breitbart? <laughs> Wait, who died? No, they thought possibly Eddie Murphy <laughs> you guys died. Know, you guys all know that I, I don't hear any of this stuff. So who is it that oh, I didn't possibly hear this. died? Eddie Murphy almost Eddie died. Murphy. He did not die, and he's fine. He almost died. He's not dead. And then no, I, his I, brother, I do know this, his brother did die. Yes, he did. He did. Charlie Murphy. Charlie Murphy did die, but there were rumors yeah, out there he that did. Eddie, His brother, like about a week ago, right? Exactly. And I read that in the Post Gazette and the New York Times. Okay, so when we get back, we're going to get out of this planning. <laughs> we're going to we don't care about the article because I won. All the teachers are rooting for me right now, saying, "You're right, Neil." Let's get rid of curriculum mapping because, oh, this was such a great idea that came up with 15 years ago. Before that, we'll be doing it. No. And teachers, you have too much paperwork. Get rid of the curriculum map. You're listening to the Education Hour at 88.3 WRCT in Pittsburgh. And we're streaming live at WRCT.org, hashtag WRCT. So when Peter's planning his YouTubes for six weeks, I will figure out who will be my guest tomorrow. We'll be back in just a moment. We're back to the Education Hour at 88.3 WRCT in Pittsburgh. And we're streaming live at WRCT.org, hashtag WRCT. I'm with Jason, the public school guy, Jarrett, and Peter Albage. And we're going to say goodbye to planning because who needs planning? It's called we show up and we do our job and that's how we do it. And uh, I guess the, the, the proof's in the pudding when I brought up the fact that uh, I can't plan that much ahead because when you deal with celebrities and you deal with uh, publicists, there's no planning involved. You just got to go with the flow. But let's go to our next topic and there'll be another interesting one, I'm sure, as I get away from we didn't really didn't talk about teachers like common planning time survey shows well that survey says we've gotten rid of the topic and we got to go to the huffington post sorry guys we gotta we gotta really change the uh effort in this and we're gonna go to the huffington post education and see what it brings to the table Hmm. i'm looking to see the topics okay Trump aims to limit the education department's influence in new order. Okay. Let's see that was that date was on April 26th and music. Oh, that's great. Sorry people. This is hi, what, ho, hi ho. Oh no. Hi, ho. Okay. We just got hi ho, hi ho and off the world work we go. Do 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 do. Hi ho. Hi ho. Hi 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 ho. 
I had to do that because it started out with a hi ho, and that's a shout out to WRCT because we really don't do music breaks, and it's a music station. So I'm sorry, guys. We should have done, but that was my singing of hi ho, hi ho. Uh, as we go into Trump aims to limit. Hey Neil, you better watch your language. That's going to get edited, man. Hi ho, come. <laughs> Come on, we gotta get it. We have to have a morning show. We definitely do. Let's get. Come on now, replace one of these goofballs and put us on the air, and we would be so funny, talking about whatever, whenever, and have some intelligence to it. All right, so let's go back to Trump aims, and let's hope it doesn't go back on again. I apologize to the listeners who heard this because my guests did not hear "Hi ho, hi ho." President Trump issued an executive order on Wednesday that seeks to reduce federal intervention in education. It builds on his vows he made during the campaign to dismantle the Common Core state standards. Oh, I have to applaud and hand greater control of schools back to states and and local localities. I am so excited. Jason, you are so for this, right? Yeah, if it actually meant something, it, it was a, an executive order. It doesn't really mean anything. Uh, he signed something that said the executive branch is going to do this. But that doesn't mean it's actually going to change. And Common Core isn't run by the executive branch of, of the federal government. It's a conglomeration of state-run business, a state of states that came together to, to put this together and agree to it. So it's much ado about nothing. All right, Jason, Jarrett, your response. Are you excited about Common Core going bye byes? Um, <laughs> you know my feelings about this. I'm totally satisfied with Common Core. I think the people that well, you know my answer. I'm no, I'm not excited by it. Peter, do you want Common Core gone or not? Well, can you just give me a brief uh, description, just to make sure I remember it correctly? Common Core is national For state st- is national standards that are state based. That uh, basically you have specific curriculum you need to cover in specific areas, and there are there is curriculum based on it, and it's new aged mumbo jumbo that's being taught. <laughs> basically, you have a set of standards that continuously get improved. Hopefully. Right, right. That's the key right. phrase that Neil doesn't like, standards, a set of standards, <laughs> principles, <laughs> guidelines. <laughs> See, that, be that's, that's mumbo-jumbo <laughs> in Neil's world. <laughs> to, to, to be honest, when I'm going through different things, like different challenges, and, you know, like, let's say what I'm doing for my personal work, I like to set standards for myself, so... I I would say to keep standards. At least in my <laughs> well, opinion. Jason's for this, but he believes it's not going to happen. So let's hear about the executive order. The order directs ec- uh, Education Secretary Betsy DeVos to identify examples of federal overreach in Bailwick. Senior education development official Rob Goad said on a call with reporters. For the next 300 days, DeVos and the team of, de- of, de- of department staffers will analyze regulations and guidance to determine whether they illegally overstep the department's authority. Far too long, the federal government has imposed its will on the state and local governments. The result has been uh. education that spends more and achieves far, far, far less. My administration has been working to reverse this federal power grab, Trump said on Wednesday. It is not clear Uh, what policies education department officials will actually finger. (laughs) And a federal law passed in late 2015 already returns a degree of education power to the uh, states. But some of Trump's supporters are hoping the administration acts quickly to roll back the federal government support of Common Core. Uh, as well as yeah, Obama air he, guidance related to civil rights, student uh, civil rights. No, I wouldn't. Yeah, not see, that, that was the that's the key part. That's the key part. Obama. See, if it's with Obama, it's got to be bad and they have to do something about it. You know, what amazes me about this president is that he has managed to fill every cabinet position with people who want to get rid of their very jobs. I, I mean, it's unbelievable. It, it it would be like hiring a plumber who wants to build you an outhouse. 
instead of actually having like plumbing and and toilets in your house. I mean, it's it, it's incredible. But Jason, you're excited if Common Core is gone and states get more and more power. Common Core is not going anywhere. <laughs> well, why does it sound like he wants it to? Because he wants it to, but it's not going anywhere. He wrote, he signed an executive order. It doesn't mean anything. It's just him saying, "I did, I did what I promised I would do on the campaign trail." But if you know anything about how federal government works, executive orders only deal with the executive branch and what the executive branch can do. The problem with Common Core is it's not an executive branch's responsibility. But can run can, state. but can DeVos get the change everything? Which is the bad thing about it. <laughs> can, DeVos can't do that's anything. That's the part of common. That's the part of Common Core I don't like. Is that they? Is that the federal government seems to think it's okay to let people make decisions who have messed up education for the last hundred years. All right, so I believe in, in, in President Trump and Secretary DeVos will get rid of Common Core. All right, Common Core standards uh, are a set of education benchmarks, this is for Peter, that the Obama administration incentivized states to adopt. They were designed to make sure that kids received similar schooling across state lines. Conservatives, however, are, have rallied against them as an example of federal interference in local schools during his campaign trump repeatedly said he would work to erase them jane robbins a senior fellow with the conservative american principles project has a long advocated on the end to common core although she has recently been critical of trump's seeming abandonment of the issue she's optimistic about the new executive order I think it's very good first step, she says. It indicates to me that the encouragement of the grassroots have given to President Trump not to abandon his campaign promises on education have some effect. So let's hope so. Now, so Jason says, no way. Peter, do you believe that his executive orders will lead this uh, firestorm to get rid of Common Core? Firestorm. Uh I I don't think so. No. I think there's a lot to work through. <laughs> this, yes. That, that this is much to do correct. about nothing. Yes. And and um I again some of the key phrases that I, I love that Neil shared was um that that states what was it, Neil? States don't want across the board standards, which of course I, I can see why some school board district administrator in Arkansas is going to totally object to teaching evolution because clearly evolution evolution doesn't exist in in Arkansas. You know, it's it's just you know how dare the the federal government actually say that science matters and that and that there's basic truths and facts when, you know, it just doesn't apply to some school district or some school in in Louisiana or Texas, for that matter, because, you know, we might actually teach that the world is getting hotter. Wow, no, that's bogus science. That's not science. That's nothing. Okay, so I'm going to see if this one, if you're a parent of a high school junior, it's time to start (laughs) nagging. Ah, uh, this is a good topic for our listeners right at the end after we've kind of jumped into so many different topics. This is a very important one. If you're a parent of a high school junior, it's time to start nagging. And call Neil. Just kidding. But <laughs> that uh that basically Did you say nagging? Yeah, nagging. So we're going to hear why that is. But so here's my point in in this whole thing about junior year. We're talking about preparation for college or career readiness in junior year. We should have these topics with our kids at about eighth grade, ninth grade. We shouldn't be waiting to their junior year to all these uh, processes to begin. But I can't believe they say it's time to start nagging. So I love that. So let's hear about this and why that is. And an NYU application reader shares her top tips for writing the perfect college essay. And so 
Uh, I don't know how that topic is. If you're a parent of a high school junior, it's time to start nagging. But let's find out why. Number one, brainstorming. Hey, Neil, Neil, before you read this, I mean, I can tell you what, I have a problem with this already is, man, I've been nagging my kid since he was three years of age. That They're waiting way too long. I mean, I think you nag your your children right from the start. I think we're talking, uh, but Jason, I think it, we're talking about essays, right? We're talking about essays, right? But what what kind of headline is this? This is this is the Huffington Post. What kind of headline is this? Because I'm expecting it to be about career, and it's all about the essay. Who the heck writes a kind of uh, uh, topic like that, Jason? I could we could talk about something completely uh, different. Yeah. What what does this My have? God. I mean, can you imagine a a junior having trouble writing about how great they are? I mean, come on. Where there's no challenge there. Right. They J- love to talk about themselves. So what are juniors thinking right now, Jason, in your school? Sex. College. <laughs> well, the thing I plum right now. <laughs> we're, we're, we're when I was the prom mating season. <laughs> we're right from the prom mating season where all the girls are dressing a little bit more revealing and they're laughing at Man. everything that the boys are saying. Uh, I'll tell you what, if I have a junior, my son, when he's a junior, is thinking about sitting down and writing in his diary or journal, I'm going to be sending him to a doctor because his priorities are just messed up. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Where are we going on this one? Now, honestly, let's kind of look at this. The essay is an important thing. But what Huffington Post, this is fake news. You... When you put a headline for something, it better you better talk about it, unless you're me. <laughs> but the, this is like vanity. <laughs> so <laughs> this is not fair. I mean, because I hope we were going to talk about juniors start nagging them about the SAT and the ACT, and also start nagging them about specifically enough um, what colleges do you want to go look at, not the essay. Uh, I think the Huffington Post was looking for this lady to write an article and say, uh, well, check, please, that because this was a complete advert. I'll use the British term for advertising, advert, uh, trying to promote this woman's business. So I apologize to our listeners that we've had real news up to this point, And the Huffington Post has put out something that is just garbage. But my tip right now for... High school juniors, start nagging them about getting ready for the SAT and ACT. Make sure that they're visiting colleges and have some semblance of an idea of where they want to go to college. If they're not doing that, parents start nagging Wait today. A second. Go ahead, Jared. Neil, Neil are, you, are you talking about having a plan? Who's <laughs> napping? Uh oh. All right, so I'm just trying to help teachers. I'm just trying to help teachers as we talk. 90 days ahead of time. 90 seconds. And that's, thank you, uh, uh, British blog talk lady girl. No. No. Go ahead. It's it's, it's midnight in Pittsburgh. You know what I'm thinking about? Sleep. I hope that's what he's thinking about, or we are on the wrong show. Sleep. 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 I meant sleep. Come on. Where's your mind? I don't know where my mind sleep. is. Uh, I, again, I'm still, in, I'm, still in Cal- I'm still in California. Remember that. California knows how to party. I missed something big, didn't I? Did I miss something huge? Yeah, huge. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, good talking to you. Great show. I don't know what we talked about tonight, but I enjoyed it, and I'm sure the listeners will enjoy it. And there was a lot of interesting topics, but honestly, I'm here for you, teachers. Let's throw our lesson Neil, plan tell, books out the window. Neil, tell our listeners how do we get the how do we get the podcast of this show? You can go ahead and go to WRCT and contact them. Take care, guys. Talk to you next week. <laughs> 
You are listening to a production of WRCT Pittsburgh. Any opinions expressed within are solely those of the participants and do not reflect the views of WRCT Radio Incorporated. Questions and comments can be addressed to the Public Affairs Director at PA at WRCT.org or by calling 412-621-0728. 